Bismillah, Asalaamu As Alaikum and a very warm welcome to Living the Life with Sadia Chaudhry. And Rahim Jung, thank you for joining us tonight. Coming up on the programme, we get a first-hand account from one gentleman who's just returned from the country of Syria. That's right. Now, he's been Syria. involved in a remarkable project. We're going to be finding out more shortly. In the meantime, let's introduce you to him. He is indeed Abdul Ahad. Asalaamu As Alaikum, Abdul Ahad. Wa Alaikum As Salaam. Welcome back. I mean, you are literally fresh back from Syria just a few days ago, aren't you? That's correct, yeah. I've just recently returned back from from Syria, yes. Excellent. We're looking forward to hearing all about that. Now, also on the show today, we have a fashion segment planned, which we've called Give Back and Stay Warm. Wondering what that's all about? Well, you have to stay tuned to find out. And helping us with this a little later on in the programme will be fashion designer Waqas Ahmed, who's in our green room. Assalamu alaikum, Waqas. Alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. Looking very trendy there. Our <laughs> resident you. stylist, I think you'll be Thank coming, you. mashallah. I'm, I'm hoping to get a look at your socks later. Because yeah, I was sure, looking at those socks in the green room, and they're very unusual. I've never seen socks like that. Anyway. That's right. Well, all of that coming up. But first, with temperatures below minus two degrees, Syrian refugees are facing a particularly hard winter. Many of them live in squalid camps with only a canvas tent for shelter. Last week, the UK wing of the South African charity Al Imdad Foundation inaugurated the UK's first containerized village inside Syria. Now, in a moment, a team member from the charity will be telling us all about it, but first, living the life's very own Sadia Chaudhry. She was in Syria last week and put this together for us. Under a blanket of snow, northern Syria lies in ruins. Civil war has touched every corner of the country, and though white and pretty, snow is the last thing Syrians need. Alimdad is a South African charity which is helping to make life better. A team from their UK office inaugurated Britain's first containerized village here last week. The camp is inside the Syrian border, part of an effort to ensure displaced people don't have to live as foreigners in another country. I think it's much more better, and I'm sure you will agree with me, it's a bit more better to, say in some, is to, to live in something semi-permanent than living in a tent. And when we had the opportunity to walk around the first camp, which is mostly made of tents, you find that uh, because of the heavy weather and the heavy snow, uh, the water was already leaking through these tents, etc. And then I said to myself, Alhamdulillah, I think we made the correct decision and the right decision uh, to come about with the containerized village. Musab works for the Turkish charity Ihaha, which is responsible for the delivery of aid in northern Syria. He shows us around the village, which is set to house up to a thousand refugees, mainly women and children. We bought these mattresses, there's six of them, and six blankets and six pillows, and there's a fan and cooler for when it becomes summer. There's also a mat to place on the floor for dining. The whole area has a communal kitchen. We cook every day and distribute the food to the families. The families of the people who died in the war will live there. Inside the village there is a hospital, a laundry service, a school and a playground with a basketball court. More than 100,000 Syrians have been killed in a war that spans much of the last three years. Millions of others have been displaced, many of them in neighboring countries like Jordan, Lebanon and Turkey. Alimdad Foundation says the refugee crisis should be at the forefront of humanitarian aid. We want to deliver and we want to fulfill the needs of the people of the hour. Whatever is the need of the hour, that's what we want to do for them. We want to meet with them and we want to say to them that you're not alone. You're not alone. We are maybe very far away from you, but in spirit we are very, very close to you. Across the border in Turkey, Alimdad is also helping to send flour and bread into Syria to address concerns that refugees are starving to death. A hike in prices of basic food makes something like bread a bit of a luxury item. At this bakery in the border town of Rehania, the charity helps to make bread that can be distributed among refugee camps. Alimdad had also organized 52 trucks to carry a total of one and a half million kilograms of flour into Syria. Sadly, by the time the convoy was ready, violence had broken out across the border, forcing the Turkish government to close the crossing. We left the trucks waiting for the border to reopen. Until it does, vital aid, including food, winter clothing and medical supplies, 
will be just out of reach for the millions who need it most. Shocking, isn't it? You know, the figures today coming out saying three quarters of the entire population of Syria are going to be dependent on international aid soon. Well, look, some great work being carried out there. Now we're joined by Abdul Ahad, who was part of that trip. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Welcome to Living the Life. Well, I mean, the figures just came out today from the United Nations. I mean, the situation is just getting progressively worse and worse and worse, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's quite shocking. Uh, the situation, the violence has escalated, the um, these food shortages, and then the this, uh, the winter conditions. So everything is, is, is getting worse and, and this is a massive humanitarian disaster that needs a, a coordinated and international response to deal with. Now tell us about that village we saw. It looked very impressive. Um, there's a hundred units yeah. of, these, of this type, these containerized villages, but there's also a lot of other facilities there we heard. Tell yeah. us a bit more about um, that. This containerized village was one of the Alimdad Foundation's first uh, uh, long-term um, projects that we want to do in Syria. Um, it gives them the comfort uh, uh, you know, of a media home, really, you know, because they live in tents and they're not the, the, the right uh, And place. for this kind of weather, those yeah. tents aren't yeah, going to do anything. Yes, it's really freezing. We, we were there last week and we saw how cold, mm. uh, how severe weather conditions they have to go through. These tent, uh, these uh, containerized village. We call it containerized village, but it's like a porter cabin. Mm. It has living quarters. It has uh, communal kitchens. It has uh, medical camp. It has most important education facility because half of the children are not going to school. So by incorporating everything into this camp, you are uh, meeting the needs of the people. So, so alhamdulillah, we also plan to um, open a trauma unit in there. So, which is you know to deal with the psychological psychological. Of war, yeah, of course, there's so many factors. So many. Uh, uh, projects that Alimdad Foundation mm. has embarked on and this is the platform where the containers of village will be the foundation and from there we expand the different uh, facilities but uh, the, the, the Alhamdulillah uh, by successfully opening this containers village it's been a you know a great and we plan to open a second one um, uh, within close proximity to the to, uh, to the first one uh, because there's such an urgent need for proper su suitable shelter. I mean there, the need is there I mean Sadia if I could ask you I mean you were there mm. last week filming a fantastic report that you did and you were talking to me about the fact that people don't even have socks in this yeah, weather. Children don't have socks. We saw yeah, lots of children so looking around without socks and their fingers are bent. Yeah. They can't stretch their fingers open because they're not wearing gloves. Mm. Many of them not wearing coats. Yeah. 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 Really, it's really snowy conditions. Really yeah, they're walking bare feet and it's, it's something like that. We can't, uh, it's unbearable for us, but they have to live with that condition. And, and, and uh, subhanAllah, the winter, mm. I mean, we thought we were accustomed to the bad weather here in the UK, living in the UK, but this, this uh, uh, severe uh, weather conditions, like mm. a biting cold, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's really, really painful. I mean, the, it's been covered in the mainstream media or since last week because the storm initially hit, the, the worst part of the storm hit on the 11th, which was last Wednesday, and they've yeah. been saying this is the worst storm in several decades, the yeah. coldest temperatures that they've experienced. And many people are just living in, in tents, or not even tents, not even yeah. what we'd call tents, yeah. talking about bits of wood Bid with wood. plastic over the top. And yeah. unfortunately, sure. we've seen in the last few days increasing numbers of children and women mainly who are literally freezing to death. Yeah, subhanAllah, it's so, so traumatic to live, to, 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 to see that, uh, you know, the, the, the suffering of the kids. And that's something, that's sort of sad uh, side of, of this conflict, that the kids are the main victims who are going through this, uh, yeah, this, this conflict. Uh, and, and they're really, really suffering. We, we, um, uh, we recently, uh, in that visit, we met a, a, a six-year-old child. Um, he was um, affected um, because a, a bomb fell in his, uh, in his in the house and he was affected by the shrapnel uh, and that literally paralyzed him and subhanallah the, his 11 year old brother picked him up you know just suddenly picked him up and, and just literally tried to uh, flee find a safe refuge and eventually crossed the border um, into uh, Turkey where he got medical attention um, but when we met this six year old child Saddam his name is um, he, he, every night he cries, Ummi, Ummi, a six year old child, and, um, uh, and his brother tries to comfort yeah. him as much as possible. But he's, he, this, oh. this, his elder brother is now acting like he's uh, like a mother his and a guardian. father. Yeah. And, you know, for, for a six year old child to go through that trauma, that experience, yeah. it's, you know, we can't comprehend anything like that. Well, it's heart wrenching stuff, but it's, uh, if it's not the violence, uh, it's not the winter, it's also food starvation is a big issue yeah. but uh, your charity is doing some work in terms of sending flour and bread 
across. Okay. Yes, well. alhamdulillah. Um, last week we had 52 trucks of flour, mm -hmm. uh, 1.5 million kilos of, uh, of, of flour, which was uh, taken to one of our um, depots, working with our implementing partners on the ground between Turkey and, uh, and Syria. This flour was then um, uh, um, grinded and baked into a pita bread. Every day from that depot we have 18,000 bread being produced. They are then packaged and loaded onto smaller trucks. And then these smaller trucks are then going to rural areas where the need is most severe because these people cannot cross over because of the conflict. So these smaller trucks are able to access those areas and deliver those very essential bread. Because remember, the price of bread has risen by 500%. Mm. 500%. Bread. Something simple has risen 500 percent. Of course, because of the shortage. Yes, subhanallah. Right. And, and if you uh, there was a, on today, the statistics came out today. Uh, four out of five Syrians believe that uh, the the worst thing worry for them is food. Abdullah, had um, you guys are also working in parts of Gaza and all over the the Middle East. If someone, if anyone wants to get in touch with you and find out more about your projects or how they can donate and help you, how would they do that? Um, yes, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have our website www.alimdad.co.uk where you can see all those images and videos of the recent trip to Syria uh, and you can make online donations. Uh, and uh, it's quite interesting, we were talking about clothing and fabrics. Alhamdulillah, Alimdad Foundation just recently started the Winter Warmth campaign where we're going to provide warm clothing, blankets, hats and, and importantly footwear to the Syrian uh, children especially. Uh, so it's important any brothers and sisters watching this program can make a donation a little as 25 pounds through our global donation point we call it our website www.alimdad.co.uk so 25 pounds to get a whole winter pack yeah, packed. for one person yeah and Syria. it's quite essential with with the current situation on the ground the winter and the terrible winter conditions it's essential that we give yeah. these clothing and we're so blessed that we have warm clothing we've got so much variety of choice our brothers and sisters don't have that choice so it's important that brothers and sisters come forward and contribute towards this noble cause thanks that's Al Imdad, isn't it? I M D double A D. That's correct. Dot co dot UK. Excellent. Thank you to all of our guests. That does bring us to the end of tonight's Live Your Life. As I said, thank you to Abdul Ahad, Wakas Ahmad, and our wonderful models, Ali Abbas and Mohammed Kamran. Living the Life is back at the same time tomorrow. Until then, have a very pleasant evening. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.